All right, in this video, we're going to get a little bit thick. We're going to talk about cores. And in previous tutorials, we have called these cores code bases or code packs or things like that. Um, one of the users suggested that we call them cores, and we actually really like that name for these. If you want to see how to create a core, if you go to the tutorial that's uh, create, um, creating custom modules, you'll actually see um, how we create a core. You'll see how we create a new um, set of code inside routines. So these are all examples of cores. There's basic, basic no scroll, and our mystic searches core, which you guys don't get to see yet. Um, but you can uh, you can actually, right now, you probably only have basic if you've been using this and don't have the latest version. If you have downloaded the latest version, um, you'll probably see basic no scroll. Um, you might even have some more if, if uh, we've updated since then, or there's probably some in the forums as well. And basically, inside basic is all the scripts, all the scripts for um, your game that are possible to set up uh, for, for your game are in here. And when you build modules, you are selecting which of these scripts within your core that you want to use. For instance, um, inside module scripts for the basic core, uh, your movement scripts behave in a certain way that interact with the system scripts inside basic and all this basically from here down the hierarchy work together. Whereas when you're in no scroll and you're in, uh, you know, the module scripts and you're in the movement scripts, um, these work with the system scripts inside no scroll. So all these sort of work forward like this. So, um, to, to sort of show how that works, uh, to give at least a small example, um, <clears throat> I want to show you a little bit of a difference between going from a game that uses the basic core to the one that uses the single screen, basic single screen or basic, um, what did we call it over here? Uh, basic no scroll core. So, um, this game, if I look at my system, you'll see that all of these are set to basic. Everything here is basic, basic, basic. Whereas if I go over here and I look at this one, the layout is pretty similar. In fact, they look almost identical on the screen. Uh, if I go to script settings, you can see they're, they're all set to basic, no scroll. So they're going to a uh, version of, of those scripts that are in the no scroll core. And, and why would we want to do that? Well, one thing is the basic, uh, the basic game uh, core is really ripe with a lot of extra stuff that you need in order to make, you know, a wide variety of things happen. Most, uh, most involve scrolling. Most are sort of centered around scrolling. That takes up a ton of resources. It takes up a ton of RAM to get that right. Uh, it takes up processing power. Um, and, you know, to have that many uh, things going on in the game that are possible just by one click of a, a you know, flag. If I just go in here and I click a flag, I can change the way it operates. Um, if I look at this scrolling game, one thing I'm going to notice is that in order to dependably get scrolling to work, I have to load two screens worth of data. So if I look at the picture processing unit right here, you can see I've loaded one screen, I've loaded half of the next screen, and I've loaded half of the screen to the left of me right here. So if I start moving to the left, my the, the window will start actually moving, you know, this way. If I start moving to the right, oops, sorry. If I start moving to the right, you'll see what's happening. The screen is loading and then unloading over over here. So I've always got two screens worth of data loaded and I've got a camera that's moving and in order and, and I've got um, the sprite zero hit and that does a certain something when I have that turned on. So there's all kinds of things that are happening. If you just want to make a single screen game like the kind that we were making during the beta, all that is really superfluous. Like if you want to go back to putting your HUD on the bottom of the screen, but now you can't because we've got scrolling and sprite zero may, means that it's got to stay at the top of the screen like that. That kind of becomes problematic for you. OK, so let's take a look at a um, no scrolling uh, uh game core and if i play this and i look at the picture processing it it looks on the surface you know identical until i look at the picture processing unit and i can see it didn't load any second screen and in fact there's no scrolling at all and when i go here um i haven't even set up what happens if i get oh, there we go i go i go to the next screen but notice it loaded on this 
first screen. It never loaded the second screen. And uh, that's because we're using sort of a single screen dynamic. There's no need to have this second screen. And we can actually use a lot of that RAM data, data in other ways or use the second name table in other ways. And not only that, if um, you know, if we wanted to actually put our HUD at the bottom of the screen, let me. I'm going to go ahead and go to HUD and boxes. This is the base uh, base co uh, core. Um, I'm going to use Sprite Zero Detection. Um, 127 was the sprite, and put it at 246 ish and. 30, I think, right? Yeah, so put it over there. Um, and that should interact at the bottom. Um, not going to have anything drawn there, but okay. So now I've got a HUD at the top of the screen. Works fine, and we have to use the Sprite Zero uh, detection to do scrolling and keep that HUD in place, like we had talked about uh, in one of the previous tutorials. Um, but if I, uh, just like I talked about, if I try to put that at the bottom, um, let's say I try and put the HUD, oops, let's say I try and put the HUD here, set the HUD area, and even if I, let's see, set the game area, um, even if I do this correctly, Even if I set that up to somewhere that it absolutely should hit, um, I'm still going to have problems because it's taking way too long to find that sprite zero to split the screen. So I'm going to have awful, terrible things happen here. That's not looking right. And, you know, I'm going to have all kinds of problems. Okay. So that said, if I come over to this one, this is the single screen engine. And I'll do that exact same thing where I will set that to be my HUD area. I'll set this to be my playable area. Um, and I won't use Sprite Zero Detection. I'm just going to test the game like this. And now you can see in this, I have the HUD at the bottom of the screen, and there's no problem with that. So that's one of the reasons that you might want to use a single screen uh, engine. And if you're asking why some games did have you know HUDs at the bottom of the screen, I know they did. Super Mario 3 did, and it scrolled. Yes, um, certain mappers allow for scan line counting, and they allow you to do you know um, more advanced effects like that. Our mapper does not. Uh, most mappers do not. Uh, so you know we use the Sprite Zero hit, like the original Super Mario Brothers used in order to split the screen, uh, and that's. Uh, that's why you can't put it at the bottom of the screen using our d default mapper that you, that Nestmaker uses. Um, so uh, that that's another reason, and yet another reason why you might want to use a single screen uh, core is if you have a lot of things happening. For instance, um, lock blocks and monster blocks and things like that, and it's going to be single screen anyway. Um, that stuff is a lot less crazy in a single screen game than it is in a scrolling game. Um, just because a scrolling game has to keep track of which name table you're on. And so when I'm looking at the picture process, oops, sorry. When I'm looking at the picture processing unit, um, if my camera's over here and I hit the lock box, it needs to know to change the locks on this screen, not on this screen. Whereas if I'm over here, it changes on this screen. It gets kind of complicated. Um, and the, you know, the, the more complex of a game you make, the, the sort of more advanced you have to be in being able to read the code in order to make changes. Whereas a single screen game is a little bit easier to navigate through. So that's a little bit about cores and what they are. And I end up, I hope that, you know, we end up having a whole bunch of different cores that, you know, change and manipulate the, the fundamental sort of script base in different ways uh, for different purposes and, and then modules within those cores. And I hope that users start to create those as well.